Thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, I still remember 10 years ago when I met my engineering professor, and then we start to collaborate and we start to do a CFD. And actually, I was uh, very excited with all the preliminary data because as ENT, and then we hardly to see some uh, 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 f many functions which have been described in the textbook. So um, today I'm going to present most of my data which I published in uh, five years ago because we discontinue this study because it's difficult to get the funding. And then therefore, I if you don't know funding, we, we can't keep our staff and doing CFDs. Really, we need the manpower. So therefore, actually, my purpose is to come here to get myself upgrade. And then we try to explore, probably today, the first part, I'm going to explore more physiology. Actually, I like to, the second part in my afternoon, I like to see, because most clinicians, they are interesting, how CFD impact on the clinical practice. Uh, so this is the aim I, I, I try to learn, since all the experts and, and by name, and they're all sitting here, so I try to get myself to be upgraded. So we all know, uh, as ENT, I already showed this slide, the nose is a part of airway, but only about, if you look at the service area, only a 5%, all to 10, a little bit more than 5%. But we already say this is very important because there are so many <laughs> important functions which are being achieved during this uh, small size. And, and then we know all these uh, functions, and then we got to have uh, 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 airflow. It must be laminar or turb uh, turbulent flow, and then the air must interact with the, the the, the mucosa, actually this one was, was uh, downloaded from internet. And then I tried to understand how this uh, uh, being interaction being achieved. And then we will come up with all the heating, humidification, filtration, or faction, all these uh, uh, functions. And then when I was in Europe, my, 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 my PhD supervisor, Professor Peter Clement, so he's a ch he was chairman of an international standardization committee for, for rhinomanometry. So we, we, we do a lot of rhinomanometry, acoustic rhinometry, and peak flow. But these are all talking about nasal resistant flows. But we are not using this uh, technique, is not able to achieve, to understand better how this uh, micro, this function is being achieved in the nose. Therefore, I was very excited, uh, excited since we start to, to understand then we can have a model, we can have a CFD, and then we can explore. And then as a normal, we, we do the CT scan, MRI, and then actually I spend most of my, my research time in the lab, in the engineering lab. I was so, and then we try to build up all these uh, 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 functions. And then, as I asked before, I'm an ENT, I really don't know all these uh, phys physics, all these uh, software, all these measures, quality, and everything are all depending to my colleagues uh, from engineering. So he told me you're using a study and lamina and everything. So they are very powerful, a uh, good uh, group uh, doing research. So when, when we're doing the, uh, the research, we all understand that uh, the flow rate is different. Actually, as an ENT before, I never tried to understand uh, anyone knows breathe and is that important? But once you build a model, and then we start to dig up all the textbook, and we try to see when you come, your nose breathe about five to twelve liter. Actually, the, all this uh, knowledge have been uh, completely forgot since I was in a medical school. But now we all trace them back. So it means when you come breathe, you know, actually flow rate is quite low. And then when you do exercise, and then you do excessive uh, exercise, you get more. So is that important? Because from our model, it's really quite important. If you do a, a lamina, uh, when you do a, a calm breathe, actually the air the fr uh, fly through the nose, actually we don't see very much turbulence. But now, if we increase the airflow, and then we start to see turbulence, especially very interesting, we see all this turbulence on the surface of uh, uh, inferior turbinate. And then if we start to have a breathe more, and now we st start to see a very interesting uh, structure, nasal valve. So it means this is uh, somewhere I always learn from, from Ron Echo, professor, he, he was my, my, one of my, my, my teacher. He always say this is a functional, uh, 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 it's not really the anatomical area because you can't see this. Because only when the airflow start, then you can see. Indeed, it's very interesting we can see start airflow and then there's a turbulence just in front of inferior turbinate. So therefore, I, when I was giving a lecture to our ENT doctor, I always say when you 
do any surgery, if you touch to the inferior, uh, inferior turbinate, especially when you touch the head of inferior turbinate, be careful because this is a structure we have to be very careful. So this is a textbook we all learn and then from the very old uh, paper from uh, Professor Ron Echo. And I always say, yeah, be careful in front of uh, uh, inferior tapina, that's a nasal valve. So this is only we can see when you're doing the simulation. So of course, when we do simulation, we can see many floor as a previous uh, speakers already uh, mentioned. One is, is a nasal valve. And then also this uh, very important one is all factory or factory uh, area. Because my, my, many of my colleagues always ask me, you have done so many work and research, and can, please demonstrate to me. Because some patients, before, after surgery, surgeons are very satisfied with the surgery, but patients say, doctor, I lost my smell. I can't smell well as before. So it means when they have a disease, when they have a nasal poly, have nasal obstruction, they smell better. So I'm sure they got to have something, airflow must be changed. So therefore, and uh, we, we actually, we are very in interesting, we try to do this. And then what I like CFD model means if we have a construct a normal uh, a model, we always can mimic uh, artificially to expand the turbinate. And then we try to make a, 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 a nasal obstruction, and even we can have a severe nasal obstruction. How we use, we use our, our we have a serious study in, in the nasal, in, in rhinomanometry, acoustic uh, uh, rhinometry, so we have a quite clear defi definition from our population, means if you, we have MCA drop to, to uh, one third, so means most likely we see in this range, patient with a mild nasal obstruction, mild to moderate nasal obstruction complaint, complaint. if you have two thirds, and then, then we based on this criteria, we start to adjust our model, then we try to see with a healthy, moderate uh, uh, obstruction and severe nasal obstruction. So now, if we look at this from the healthy nose, if you look at the velocity, pressure, turbulence, Actually, as I uh, uh, explained before, we know the airflow most is um, go to the middle stream. So you pass uh, between the inferior, uh, uh, upper part of inferior turb turbinate and, and middle turbinate and septum. This is uh, the part. So, and then, but once you have a nasal obstruction, you see that more air come to the upper part of the nose. And then also interesting, if we look at the pressure, really we, we, we know nasal firing has and uh, some negative pressure, but if you have a severe nasal obstruction, indeed your pressure was a double or even triple. So therefore we, we, we were very happy because through this model, we can see anywhere. And then we, we can see in, in a model, so we, we, we can start to look at our velocity, pressure, washer, stress, and then everything. So probably we can try to combine and then to understand better the physiology. And then, I have a small part, as I uh, uh, explained before. We all know uh, uh, snoring and sleep apnea, and uh, some part of patients are related to nasal obstruction. But it is, this has never been the mechanism why this have, have never been uh, 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 demonstrated. So therefore, in, in our study, if we look at the, if you have a nasal obstruction, we think because the nasal, nasal pharynx has really increased the negative uh, 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 pressure, Therefore, once I show this, and I've been always invited by our, our colleagues from snoring conference. Actually, I already say I'm working more, more, more in the nose, but then they start to invite me to, to talk this uh, small part. Nasal uh, uh, septum deviation, very common. We all know some patients have a very severe nasal uh, deviation, but complaints normal. And I saw so many, I say, hey, your nose was completely deviated, but patient, I'm a feel well. So most likely this patient don't operate them. If you operate them, you may have even, even worse. So we already know this. But then uh, in, in our model, we, we try to understand how the, if, you, if you have deviated the nose, then especially you see this is a very narrow side. Actually, we don't see very much flow. And this is from our CFD model, but we haven't compared. I'm very interesting to see how compared with a patient complaint and then our model. And then we know, we learn from rhinomanometry and acoustic rhinomanometry, you often do not correlate very well because of patient complaint. Now, we, we, we have same things now. We, we, we say if you have a nasal polyp, you often have a lower airway problem. But we start 
ENT star to, to send more patients for lung function test. Then we often patient detect lung function problem. But if you repeatedly ask patient, no, my lung is very good. Therefore, in many conferences, I start ask doctor, do we need to treat them? They say no. If you treat patient, they must have a complaint. So means this is very important. So model is model. Therefore, for me, the most interesting, we try to know the model, how much model can compare to our clinical practice. If we can move this step, and then probably we will move this uh, to the higher uh, or, or, or levels. So this again, septal deviation, and then we can really see if you have no flow, and then actually the, this is shear, shear stress actually will, will drop. Uh, actually, we don't see very much. So it means the air function, so mucosa function, actually has never been achieved. And then, actually, I was invited to talk about this uh, ethnic uh, variation because my colleagues has done uh, uh, this study because, um, actually, I don't know very much. And then from clinically, I don't see, uh, because in Singapore, we have multi-factorial, uh, multi-ethnic uh, uh, society. We have a Chinese, a Malay, we have a, a Caucasian, we have an Indian. So, actually, I don't see any, any, any pattern which are related to ethnic uh, 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 difference. But of course, from the model, you do see this is, a, we say this is a Caucasian nose, this is a, a Chinese no nose, this is Indian nose. This is also based on uh, uh, Professor Ron Eccles' uh, uh, publication a few years ago. So my, my colleagues was very interesting, say why not we, we set out this model and try to see how this uh, 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 different, whether there is a uh, difference. Actually, Really, if you look at the general, we, 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 we don't see very much a difference. But if you really want to pull up and then to see uh, the angle, and then probably we can see something with difference, uh, probably the, the, the from the Indian nose. But again, this is a small sample study. We, we need to increase. We, we need to explain very well, carefully. But we just say the angle may be uh, a little bit lower. And then the most airstream reach to the all factory or factory area, probably less, but this again, so we, we, we have to reserve for, for, for large sample study. And then actually I learned th today, really we are not going to work on sing single model and few model, probably we need to go on for more models and then try to build up a, a complete understanding. So this is my first part of my uh, presentation and I really I like to thank my my colleague from uh, engineering department. Unfortunately, this uh, Professor Lee is a genius, and I already told him uh, since we've been working for 10 years, so he's worked very closely with airway physicians, and I actually I told him, we'll invite you to teach our medical student because he understands much more our medical term. And then, why? Because the combination. We say, nowadays, the knowledge we have to cross medicine, we have to go into engineering, we have to go to a, any other area and then to get our upgrade and get more, learn more. Thank you very much.